please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Nifty is fast, giving up its gains. Started off quarter percent higher. NBFC sector is facing in growth derating rather than credit concern or liquidity concern. Yes. Markets are down 25 points, 11,029. And I, I think it's a very, very sensible uh, uh, decision. I mean, we really welcome this. Markets have taken a turn for the worse now at the low point of the day. Towards the end, purely because of expiry factors, uh, there was some recovery and I think crucial levels were defended. 10,950 on the Nifty were defended. A torrid September series and risk aversion towards emerging markets result in Sensex and Nifty losing 0.6%. Nifty actually ends below 11,000 mid cap C, sharper cuts with that index ending at its lowest level in over a year. Short term bond yields ease after the Reserve Bank of India announces new measures to boost liquidity in banks, but bank stocks remain under pressure. NBFC stocks also take a beating once again. Customs duty on washing machines, air conditioners, refrigerators and compressors have been hiked negative for stocks like Voltas and Havels. Titan, however, sees a relief rally as import duty on gold remains unchanged. Customs duty hike on aviation turbine fuel weighs on airline stocks a weak rupee and a higher price of crude oil acts as further headwinds for the sector. Import curbs help rupee open strong only to weaken later due to higher crude prices. Oil marketing companies end in the green. Well, those were the top five headlines from a day that Dalal Street will gladly forget. In fact, it is a September that Dalal Street will gladly forget. Hello and welcome to Markets Today. Talk back the show where we tell you all that happened in the six hours of trading in just five headlines. I'm Lata Venkatesh with me, my colleague Prashant Nair. Hi, Prashant. Uh, the high, you said uh, uh, September markets will gladly forget, but it ain't over yet, right? <laughs> it ain't over. <laughs> Let's not hope. It's an, a forgettable October. Just a few more days. More. And then maybe we get to October uh, with a head still above water, but painful. Once again, painful. Over the next 30 minutes, as Lada pointed out, we'll talk about the top stories which define the day. We'll take your questions and our experts will answer those questions. So joining us today to uh, answer your questions, we've got Mayuresh Joshi. Mitesh Thakkar, both on charts and fundamentals. Gentlemen, thanks very much, both of you, for being with us here on the show. But before uh, we start the Q&A session, let's quickly uh, recap what uh, stood out. And I think uh, Bear stood out. <laughs> it's been that way all through this week. Rather. Uh, yes, sir. the morning queues were actually not bad at all. Uh, the Fed had hiked, but it was largely unexpected lines. Yes, crude was a sore point for us to start with, and emerging markets were not taking the Fed hike and the GDP uh, forecast projections, higher GDP projections, very nicely. But we had two strong things to probably work in our favor. We had that import curbs announced by the government of India overnight, which is supposed to have steadied the rupee, and given domestic industries a better chance against competition. And two, we had the Reserve Bank uh, very uncharacteristically at 8.30 in the morning announcing that uh, there's more liquidity available to the banks. But uh, was it of any avail? No. It should have been best for the NBFCs and banks, but uh, that was the index which fell the most. The bank index, if there was an NBFC index, that would have fallen even more. Uh, that would have shown much deeper cuts. Uh, ultimately, what we had as winners were just oil marketing companies and Reliance and uh, astray others. So uh, clearly, it's a market that is now discounting growth. I mean, if NBFCs are not lending and banks, 10 of them are already under the Reserve Bank surveillance, who's left to lend? Are we overstating growth? Uh, and if imports are being imposed uh, uh, at higher, uh, I mean, import uh, hikes are going to come, tariff hikes are going to come, even that will make growth a little difficult. This market is now discounting lower growth. Selling is begetting selling. I mean, you're just falling under your own weight. Uh, Stock-wise, did you get more cues? I mean, so uh, with distinction, I only have losers today, Lata. Oh. So not a single gainer. Uh, I mean, there's no point really. There were a few, so Infosys, TCS, etc. But overwhelmingly, stocks, of course, lower. So real estate, the top three indices which were down, real estate, small cap, and the mid-cap index. I mean, uh, down anything between two and a half to two and three quarters of a percent. Uh, and look at falls. I mean, Yes Bank. Uh, down another 9%. India Bulls, 6% uh, lower. Bajaj Finance was down 5 
And by the way, these are all nifty stocks. Bajaj, Finserv, Axis Bank, Kotak Bank. Well, all financials and uh, in financials, a lot of NBFC, uh, mm. uh, NBFCs. Okay. Autos, Maruti, Tata Motors, Mahindra, uh, sort of steep, steep pressure. Uh, there is talk that maybe the festive season, which is one of the best uh, for uh, consumer goods, is not going to be all that great and uh, stocks sold off. In the broader space, again, I mean, it's a whole host of financials interspersed with some non-financials. So Reliance Capital, PNB, Voltas. Uh, you had Pyramal Enterprises, Edelweiss, uh, India Bulls Real Estate, Idea, Canfin Homes, PNB Housing, Ujjivan, South Indian Bank, Mahindra and uh, Financial Services, Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services, OBC. So again, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's basically just pressing the exit button out of uh, mm. uh, NBFCs and financials en masse. I mean, no real distinction between stronger, weaker. Absolutely. At some uh, you know point in time, I reckon that distinction will again come back, but today, Certainly was not the day. Nothing. Mm, absolutely. Actually, the small cap index has wiped out all its gains and is uh, year on year in negative terrain. And the mid caps are also got in there just now. Uh, after today's uh, fall, I think the uh, mid cap 100 is down 1% year on year. So imagine the glorious gains of 2017 have been wiped out. Uh, well, let's find out what our guests make of uh, the markets. Mitesh, first to you. Uh, now that uh, just 11, uh, 10,950 defended, uh, does that mean you don't have to throw in the towel yet? The bulls, uh, I mean. Yeah, I get it. Uh, even Lata, I think uh, it's been defended, but you know, hardly by anything. We have nearly closed only 30 points away, and that could be taken out in uh, tomorrow morning's cap talk. My worry is not really about the smaller levels. I think. Uh, the uh, worry is that the medium and the longer term charts have started to turn negative for the bank nifty and slowly i think nifty is now showing the first signs of crack in the indicator setup on the longer term chart so i would be more worried about that i think uh, in the short term yes it could happen that 10880 which has been the two three days kind of intraday low uh, could hold and we might see a choppy consolidation between 10880 900 on the lower side to roughly about 11150 on the upper side but the chances are very bright that we might eventually break on the lower side from this consolidation. If that were to happen, I think we'll see more declines happening, particularly led by uh, underperformance in the financials and the bank nifty. So I think that is a bigger worry. In the short term, it looks like, as I've said, uh, looks like a more of a choppy consolidation between about 250 point kind of range. But I think overall uh, bias slowly and uh, on the medium term charts is slowly turning towards the negative side or corrective side. Okay, not looking good. Second headline. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the second uh, headline then. The Reserve Bank of India eased cash requirement rules for banks today to boost liquidity in the system. This move by the RBI pulled down the short-term bond yields uh, by between 30 to 40 basis points but failed uh, to power up uh, stocks, bank stocks and NPFCs. Bank of Baroda, Axis Bank, Bajaj, Twins. I mean, the entire bunch which I read out just a while back, they were all sharply in the red. Lata, I mean, some relief but clearly not enough. Yeah, you know, basically this is how it works. Banks have to keep 20% of all their deposits in government securities. They have to keep a further about 8 9% as what you call liquidity coverage, also in high-quality government bonds. Now, banks have been saying, why don't you overlap the two? So some overlap was already there. 13% of what you kept as SLR was counted for LCR. Today, the RBI said two more percentage points of what you keep as SLR can count for LCR. So basically... RBI is saying you don't have to keep so much money in government bonds, you can on lend it. Now, two people should have benefited. Public sector banks have more, they have about 30% of their deposits, sir. So th that part they can actually give the RBI, take repo money and lend it out. The people like ICICI, HDFC, Kotak, who run a tight ship, would actually, as their deposits grow, they will have to uh, you know, uh, buy CDs, issue CDs, raise money and buy bonds. They didn't have to do that. So actually the short term market was very happy. No competition from the CDs of HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank. So the short term paper actually saw yields fall and the short term paper went up. Even commercial paper of manufacturing companies went up. So clearly the short term yield market saw liquidity. But alas, not NBFC CPs. Alas, not, you know, beyond the two month paper. Those who desperately needed liquidity haven't yet got it. And over there, the expectation is that the risk aversion continues. Banks are not going to lend immediately till the crisis blows over. And therefore, their growth is getting shaved off. Uh, you know, we spoke with market experts uh, as well. Arvind Sanger and Nilesh Shah. 
who actually remain quite cautious about short-term prospects for uh, the NBFC uh, sector from a stock perspective. Listen in. Today, NBFC sector is facing in growth derating rather than credit concern or liquidity concern. Uh, partially growth derating is coming from liquidity concern as well as credit concern. Tightening of liquidity conditions for NBFCs is not going to disappear even if a bailout uh, happens uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, ILF, NFS. India has a lot of headwinds and, you know, the policy measures around announced so far will have some moderate help on, you know, imports and therefore uh, on, on the deficit. Okay. Uh, well, that's the word. Uh, I wanted to ask questions of Mayuresh myself, but then there is someone who has written to us. R. Kamath from Bangalore has written to us with a question on Reliance Capital. Actually, that stock year-to-date is down 50%. He wants to know what is the time to invest 12 lakh rupees in that company. Why would he not diversify? I don't know. Mayuresh, what would you tell him? Evening, Lata. No, I think uh, you're absolutely right. You should probably diversify at this point of time because it does, doesn't make sense to lock in such a value at this juncture. Having said that, uh, again, I think a mixture between uh, qualitative banks uh, and NBFCs is something that the investor can look at in a staggered way. So I think banks like ICICI Bank, uh, where our own belief is that uh, the uh, earnings momentum should slowly and steadily catch up, uh, or even something like an HDFC bank where the retail franchise remains extremely strong uh, is, is something that the investor can spread his investments across. Uh, again, from the NBFC universe, a lot has been said. What you're actually saying in terms of prognosis actually is turning out right in terms of the entire universe uh, and the sentiments being sour when the earnings are concerned. But again, I think qualitative stocks here, stocks like Bajaj Finance on declines, HDFC probably, is something that can be looked at. Reliance Capital, I think I'll be staying away at least at this point of view. Mm. Okay. Uh, Food for thought, Lada. Maruti, I mean, just as a, uh, just as a thought, is down 30% from its highs. Okay. So, Reliance Capital, <laughs> you know, mm. there are, there are, no, there are actually, lots of year to uh, date, quality names. If you pick names. up any of the yeah. uh, NBFCs, they are uh, lower. Yeah. Even Bajaj Finance is lower. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, Reliance Capital, not of the same franchise or, uh, yeah. or quality as uh, Bajaj Twins. But there's, there are more finance questions. This is Rahul K, uh, who has write, written to us from Madhya Pradesh. His query is on SSA Bank. He's been holding 200 shares of the bank, which he purchased at 292 rupees. Wants to know outlook on the stock. 200 at 292. Uh, what would you say is, say, the next one year or next six month outlook, uh, uh, Mitesh? I'm quite positive. In fact, uh, on both uh, Axis and ICICI Bank, my belief is that the uh, chart structure has improved. Uh, I think uh, he's bought at a good price. Uh, I don't think there's downside below 275, 270. So in that sense, there could be a 10% correction happening over here maximum. That's, you know, hitting the longer term support radius. But my sense is it might not happen. In fact, uh, after this correction plays out, this stock might get into an uptrend again, head towards targets of 360. And once that has been crossed, 430 is the uh, target which I would have for about 9 to 12 months. Okay, uh, Mitesh, thanks very much. Uh, Mayurish, uh, stay with us. We're taking a very quick break here. Uh, we come back and uh, we'll get uh, more questions and we'll have our experts answer them. We're also, in, in the meanwhile, listening to some market opinion that we got earlier from uh, Kartika Capital. Uh, and uh, we're back in a jiffy. Our time frame is, is longer term, is two, three years or even beyond. So on that time frame, we still see a lot of opportunities in India. So if anything, we would use this correction as an opportunity to add to our positions. The dollar could be, you know, could be turning in the near term, near to medium term. There is some light at the end of the tunnel. The dollar gets a bit weaker and that would be a really big boost for emerging markets and including India. The market looks expensive on headline multiples, but I would also point out that profits to GDP is at a cyclical low. So as you know, we hope the economy's momentum may sustains and there will be some capex cycle coming back that will uh, finally uh, you know raise earnings. And, and I think that will give uh, support to the valuations. If you have a two year view, the recovering profit cycle and this temporary pressure, 
I would say this is an opportunity to enter, not a, not a, not a time to exit. Another poor, poor day. If you were a bull, if you're hoping for a bounce, uh, none has come so far. We got through uh, two of the top five headlines, uh, and uh, here's the third one here on Markets Today Talk Back. The government's uh, custom duty hike to get foreign funds flowing back into India has taken a toll on consumer durable stocks. Havels, Voltas, Blue Star all ended sharply in the negative territory. As customs duty on high end consumer products like washing machines, air conditioners and refrigerators doubled to 20%, while Titan butter bucked the trend as gold and leather import duty remained unchanged. Anisha Jain is here with more on this. Anisha. Oh, well, yes, the news regarding the custom duty hike to 20% on ACs, refrigerators and some washing machines and compressor hike to 10% versus 7.5% earlier did not all go well for the investors today. The likes of Voltars, Blue Star, Havels were down anywhere between 5 to 10%. And what was gaining was the likes of Dixon and Amber, given the local manufacturers actually get a push. Now, this does not come as a good news for the industry, which is already reeling under the demand hit, given the fact that the summer was weak and the margins have been compressed due to the commodity pressure as well as rupee depreciation. Now, the management of Blue Star did tell us that they are not expecting any significant impact in the coming two to three months given that the channel inventory is high and the festive demand is expected to be good. But they do expect the margins to be lower on a year-to-year -year basis as well as the price hikes of 4 to 5 percent can be taken in uh, 2019. However, it is important to see whether the industry and the market is willing to allow you to take that price hike because remember, the demand has not been good and the industry has seen quite a bit of price hikes recently. Okay. And uh, uh, just abetting or adding to Anisha's arguments uh, were some of the corporates we uh, spoke with. Uh, uh, listening to what uh, the Blue Star management had to say uh, when we asked them about the impact, on, uh, uh, impact of import duties. Also, Titan, who heaved a sigh of relief that uh, there, is no, uh, int there is no import duty on gold. It's a relief, and uh, I, I think it's a very, very sensible uh, uh, decision. I mean, we really welcome this because at 10 percent, uh, the uh, duty in India is extremely high. Uh, if you see the overall quantity of gold which is being imported, it's actually much lower than mm -hmm. what it used to be in the past. And that's largely because we have uh, been promoting a, a lot of exchange of uh, gold internal. I don't believe there's an issue on the demand. The total uh, component of imports in, in, in our product uh, may be about 20 percent, and every year it is getting less and less and less. So we are, we are on that indigenization program now for eight years. So we are not as badly affected as others in the industry. Okay, let's uh, take some questions. Nagraj Kulkarni from Karnataka has written in with a question on Voltas. He's been holding 150 shares of the company. Uh, he's paid 381 rupees each, wants to know if he should hold or sell 150 at uh, 381. Uh, Mayuresh, uh, over to you. What's, uh, what's your sense on Voltas? Well, so, Prashant, I think with the duty hikes uh, which have taken place and obviously with the JV that Voltas has signed up, uh, yes, the impact can be quite meaningful and the only option that the company will have is to pass it through. Now, when they pass it through, I think the inherent demand probably just gets compressed. Uh, because of the increases in prices. Uh, again, I think the latent inventory in the system itself will also ensure that the entire pass-through does not happen. So as the Blue Star management was mentioning, all the other factors, including rupee depreciation, would also take a toll on their margins. Uh, but a large element in terms of their other businesses, uh, including the domestic one, has held up pretty well. Apart from this JV, which might have a near-term impact on to the stock price uh, and the buying price at which the investor has the stock, I think he can hold on to the stock if he's a long-term investor. Okay, hold on to Voltas. Uh, uh, well, the fourth headline from uh, Dalal Street today, it was not just high-end consumer durables. The biggest surprise was the 5% duty hike on ATF or aviation turbine fuel. Uh, this has hit an already beleaguered aviation industry, Indigo, Jet, Spice Jet, all closed in the red. Remember, in the last financial year, airlines reported uh, ATF uh, uh, consumption to the tune of $180 million. Sena Shana is here with uh, the impact uh, of this latest blow on airline companies. Over to you, Sonia. 
flow customs duty on ATF imports have been hiked from 0 to uh, 5 percent. Now, there's no direct impact because none of the companies import ATF currently. Just Interglobe has a minor imports in small batches, so no direct impact. But the indirect impact is that ATF prices will immediately move up by 5 percent in the domestic market because all the oil oil marketing companies, they have a pricing mechanism uh, based on the import uh, parity pricing. So immediately there is an expectation that ATF prices will go up and that will be damaging for aviation companies. I did reach out to a lot of the industry veterans and they told me that the policy is very detrimental to airlines in the current environment of a weaker rupee and higher crude. Not just that, there was some relief expected in the form of an inclusion of ATF into GST that has not come about. So there's further disappointment there. And that's why you're seeing stocks like uh, Jet Airways sit, uh, sit at new lows today. Sanjay Biswas, uh, Sonia, thanks very much for that. Uh, Sanjay Biswas from Kolkata has written in with a question on SpiceJet. He's been holding 100 shares of the stock at uh, 74 rupees. Price is 74. For the last 20 days, wants to know uh, if he should hold or sell. Uh, Mayuresh, uh, what, would you, uh, why, what would you tell Sanjay? Now, apart from what Sonia was mentioning, which absolutely turns out true for uh, the aviation stocks, I think crude and rupee depreciation are the two key sensitives in terms of earnings profile, and both are not working in favor of them. Add to that, I think the inability to probably pass through end prices uh, affects their yields and their EBITDA margins as well. So I think the aviation stocks uh, have to a large extent uh, absorb the kind of earnings uh, downgrades that they'll face. They're also entering into quarter two which is one of the weakest quarters that the aviation stocks will face and the translationary nature in terms of the P and L because of the rupee depreciation. So I think the tough times for aviation stocks is going to continue over the next two to three quarters if these two variables don't change. So unless the investor probably has a longer view, I think he can hold on to the stock. If he doesn't, he can probably look at some stocks as I mentioned earlier, something like an HDFC bank or an ICICI bank.